Hello, I'm Kim. I'm Philip. And we are the co-artistic directors of Fourth Wall Theatre Company. Thank you so much for joining us for this final episode of Holiday Story Time on this very special night, Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. We are so thrilled that you've joined us on Christmas Eve. So please sit back and listen to this really special and heartwarming story that we have to share with you on this very special night. We want to thank, of course, our sponsor, who without their support, we couldn't have brought you this series of stories. So thank you, the Liberty Group. We are so grateful for your support. And we want to take a moment to tell you how grateful we are for your support during this pandemic. We know that many people have suffered losses, arts organizations, individuals, you, and yet you have rallied to support us, watch what we're doing, uh, and just be fans of Fourth Wall. And thank you so much. Thank you. And Happy Christmas Eve, <laughs> and we wish you uh, great growth and prosperity and joy in the new year. Yes, our hearts are so full of love and gratitude, and please sit back now with your family, your friends, anyone you've asked to join you, and enjoy this final story about the true spirit of Christmas, and we'll see you all in the new year. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Hello everyone, we are so happy that you decided to join us tonight. My name is Courtney Lamello, and this is Santa Claus and Little Billy by John Kendrick Bangs. He was only a little bit of a chap, and so when for the first time in his life he came into close contact with the endless current of human things, it was as hard for him to stay put as for some wayward little atom of flotsam and jetsam to keep from tossing about in the surging tide of the sea. His mother had left him there in the big toy shop with instructions not to move until she came back while she went off to do some mysterious errand. She thought, no doubt, that this, with so many beautiful things on every side to delight his eye and hold his attention, strict obedience to her commands would not be hard. But alas, the good lady reckoned not upon the magnetic power of attraction of all those lovely objects in detail. She saw them as only a mass of wonders which, in all probability, would so dazzle his vision as to leave him incapable of movement. But little Billy was not so indifferent as all that. When a phonograph at the other end of the shop began to rattle off melodious tunes and funny jokes, in spite of the instructions he had received, off he pattered as fast as his little legs would carry him to investigate. After that, forgetful of everything else, finding himself caught in the constantly moving stream of Christmas shoppers, he was borne along in the restless current until he found himself at last out upon the street alone, free, and independent. It was great fun at first. By and by, however, the afternoon waned. The sun, as if anxious to hurry along the dawn of Christmas day, sank early to bed, and the electric lights along the darkening highway began to pop out here and there, like so many merry stars come down to earth to celebrate the gladdest time of all the year. Little Billy began to grow tired, and then he thought of his mama and tried to find the shop where he had promised to remain quiet until her return. Up and down the street he wandered until his little legs grew weary, but there was no sign of the shop, nor of the beloved face he was seeking. Once again, and yet again after that, did the little fellow traverse the crowded highway, his tears getting harder and harder to keep back. And then, joy of joys, whom should he see walking slowly along the sidewalk but Santa Claus himself? The saint was strangely decorated with two queer boards with big red letters on them, hung over his back and chest. But there was still the same kindly gray-bearded face, the red cloak with the fur trimmings, and the same dear old cap that the child's friends had always worn in the pictures of him that little Billy had seen. He thought it 
Very strange that Santa Claus should be so red and cold and rough. With a glad cry of happiness, little Billy ran to meet the old fellow and put his hand gently onto that of the saint. He thought it very strange that Santa Claus's hands should be so red and rough and so chapped, but he was not in any mood to be critical. He had been face to face with a very disagreeable situation. Then when things had seemed blackest to him, everything had come right again and he was too glad to make more passing notice of anything strange or odd. Santa Claus, of course, would recognize him at once and know just how to take him back to his mama at home, wherever that might be. Little Billy had never thought to inquire just where home was. All he knew was that it was a big gray stone house on a long street somewhere with a tall iron railing in front of it, not far from the park. How do you do, Mr. Santa Claus? said little Billy as the other hand unconsciously tightened over his own. Why, well, how do you do, Kitty? replied the old fellow, glancing down at his newfound friend with surprise gleaming from his deep set eyes. Uh, where did you drop from? Oh, I'm out, said little Billy bravely. My mama left me a little while ago while she went off about something and I, I, I guess I got losted. Very likely, returned the old man. Little two by four fellows are apt to get losted when they start out on their own hook, especially days like these with such crowds hustling around. But it's all right now, suggested little Billy, Hopefully, I'm found again, ain't I? Oh, oh yes, indeedy, you're found all right, Kitty, said Santa Claus. And pretty soon you'll take me home again, won't you? Said the child. Surest thing you know, answered Santa Claus, looking down upon the bright but tired little face with a comforting smile. Where might your address be? My what? asked little Billy. Your address, repeated Santa Claus. Where do you live? The answer was a ringing peal of childish laughter. <laughs> As if you didn't know, cried little Billy, giggling. <laughs> laughed Santa Claus. Can't fool you, can I? It, it, it would be funny if, after keeping an eye on you all these years since you was a baby, I didn't know where you lived, eh? Awful funny, agreed little Billy. But tell me, Mr. Santa Claus, what sort of boy do you think I've been? He added with a shade of anxiety in his voice. Pretty good, pretty good, Santa Claus answered, turning in his steps and walking back along the path he had just traveled, which little Billy thought was a rather strange thing to do. You've got more white marks than black ones, a good many more, a hundred and fifty times as many, Kitty. Fact is, you're all right, way up among the good boys, though once or twice last summer. You know. Yes, I know, said little Billy meekly. But I didn't mean to be naughty. <laughs> That's just what I told the bookkeeper, said Santa Claus. And so we gave you a gray mark. Half black, half white. That doesn't count either way, for or against you. Thank you, sir said little Billy, much comforted. Don't mention it. You are very welcome, Kitty, said Santa Claus, giving the youngster's hand a gentle squeeze. Why do you call me Kitty when you know my name is little Billy? Asked the boy. Oh, well, th th that's what I call all good boys, explained Santa Claus. You see, we divide them up into two kinds. 
the good boys and the naughty boys. The good boys we call kitties, and the bad boys we call caddies. And there you are. Just then, little Billy noticed for the first time the square boards that Santa was wearing. What are you wearing those boards for, Mr. Santa Claus? He asked. If the lad had looked closely enough, he would have seen a very unhappy look come into the old man's face. But there was nothing of it in his answer. Oh, well, uh, those are my newfangled back and chest protectors, my lad, he replied. Sometimes we have bitter winds blowing at Christmas, and I have to be ready for them. It wouldn't do for Santa Claus to come down with the sneezes at Christmas time, you know? No, sirree. This board in front keeps the wind off my chest, and the one behind me keeps me from getting rheumatism in my back. <laughs> they are great protection against the weather. I have to tell my papa about them, said little Billy, much impressed by the simplicity of the arrangement. We have a glass board on the front of our automobile to keep the wind off Henry. He's our chauffeur, and, but, but Papa wears a fur coat, and sometimes he says the wind goes right through that. Uh, he'd be glad to know about these boards. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder, smiled Santa Claus. They, they aren't very becoming, but, but they are mighty useful. <laughs> you should save up your pennies and give your Papa a pair like them next Christmas. Santa Claus laughed as he spoke. But there was a catch in his voice that little Billy was too young to notice. You've got letters printed there, said the little boy, peering around in front of his companion at the lettering on the board. What do they spell? You know I haven't learned to read yet. And why should you read at your age, said Santa Claus. You're not more than five years old, little Billy said proudly. It was such a great age. My, as old as that, cried Santa Claus. Well, you are growing fast. Why, it don't seem more than yesterday that you was a pink-cheeked baby, and here you are big enough to be let out alone? That's more than my little boy is able to do. Santa Claus shivered slightly and little Billy was t surprised to see a tear glistening in his eye. Why, have you got a little boy? He asked. Yes, little Billy, said the saint. A poor, white-faced little chap, about a, a year older than you, who, well, <laughs> never mind, kitty. He's a kitty, too. Let's talk about something else or I'll have <laughs> icicles in my eyes. You didn't tell me what those letter boards spell, said little Billy. Uh, 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 Merry Christmas to everybody, said Santa Claus. I have the words printed there so that everybody can see them. And if I miss wishing anybody a Merry Christmas, He'll know I meant it just the same. You're awful kind, aren't you? Said little Billy, squeezing his friend's hand affectionately. It must make you very happy to be able to be so kind to everybody. Santa Claus made no reply to this remark beyond giving a very deep sigh which little Billy chose to believe was evidence of a great inward content. They walked on now in silence, for little Billy was beginning to feel almost too tired to talk, and Santa Claus seemed to be thinking of something else. Finally, however, the little fellow spoke. I, I guess I'd like to go home now, Mr. Santa Claus, he said. I'm tired and, I'm afraid my mama will be wondering where I've gone to. Oh, well, th that's so, my little man, said Santa Claus, stopping short in his walk up and down the block. You, 
Your mother will be so worried. If for a fact, and your father too. I know I'd feel very worried if my little boy got lost and hadn't come home at dinner time. Uh, I, I don't believe you know where you live, though. Now, honest, come. Fess up, Billy. You don't know where you live, do you? Why, yes, I do, said little Billy. It's in a big gray house with a iron fence in front of it near the park. Oh, oh well, huh, that's easy. That's easy enough, said Santa Claus nervously. Anybody could say he lived in a gray stone house with a fence around it near the park. But you don't know what street it's on, do you? Nor the number either. I'll bet. Fourteen wooden giraffes against a monkey on a stick. No, I don't, said Little Billy frankly. But I know the number on our automobile is N-Y. Fine, laughed Santa Claus. If you really were lost, it would be a great help to know that. But not being lost, as you ain't, why, of course, we can get along without it. It's... Queer, you don't know your last name, though. I do, too, know my last name, blurted little Billy. It's Billy. That's the last one they gave me, anyhow. Santa Claus reflected for a moment, eyeing the child nervously. Well, I, I don't believe you even know your papa's name, he said. Yes, I do, said little Billy indignantly. His name is Mr. Harrison. Well, aren't you a little smart chap, cried Santa Claus gleefully. You got it right the very first time, didn't you? I really didn't think you knew it. But I don't believe you know where your papa keeps his bake shop, where he makes all those nice cakes and cookies you eat. Billy began to laugh again. <laughs> you can't fool me, Santa Claus. He said, I know my papa don't keep a bake shop just as well as you do. My papa owns a bank. Splendid. Made of tin, I suppose, with a nice little hole at the top to drop the pennies into, said Santa Claus. No, it ain't either, retorted little Billy. It's made of stone and has more than a million windows in it. I went down there with my mama to Papa's office the other day, so I guess I ought to know. Well, I should say so, said Santa Claus. Nobody better, by the way, Billy. What does your mama call your Papa? Billy, like you, he added. Oh, no, indeed, returned little Billy. She calls him Papa, except once in a while when he's going away, then she says, Goodbye, Tom. Fine again, said Santa Claus, blowing upon his fingers. For now that the sun had completely disappeared over the west, it was getting very cold. Thomas Harrison, banker, he muttered to himself. What with the telephone book and the city directory, I guess we can find our way home with little Billy. Do you think we can go now, Mr. Santa Claus? asked little Billy for the cold was beginning to cut through his little coat, and the Sandman had started to scatter the sleepy seeds all around. Yes, sirree, returned Santa promptly. Right away and off now, instantly, at once. Well, I'm afraid I can't get my reindeer here in time to take us up to the house, but we can go in the cars. Hum. I don't know whether we can or not come to think of it. Uh, do you happen to have 10 cents in your pocket? Santa added with an embarrassed air. You see, I, I left my pocketbook in the sleigh with my toy pack. And besides, mine is only toy money and they won't take that on the cars. I got 25 cents said little Billy proudly, 
as he dug his way down into his pocket and brought the shiny silver piece to light. You can have it if you want it. Thank you, said Santa Claus, taking the proffered coin. We'll start home right away. Only come in here first while I telephone Santaville, telling the folks where I am. He led the little fellow into the public telephone station, where he eagerly scanned the names in the book. At last it was found. Tom Harrison, 7654 Plaza. And then, in the seclusion of the telephone booth, Santa Claus sent the gladdest of all Christmas messages over the wire to two very distracted parents. I have found your boy wandering in the street. He's safe, and I will bring him home right away. Fifteen minutes later, there might have been seen the strange spectacle of a footsore Santa Claus leading a sleepy little boy up Fifth Avenue to a cross street which shall remain nameless. The boy vainly endeavored to persuade his companion to come in and meet Mama. No, Billy, the old man replied sadly. I must hurry back. You see, Kitty, this is my busy day, and uh, besides, I only go into houses through the chimney. I, I just wouldn't know how to behave if I went through the front door. But it was not to be as Santa Claus will. For little Billy's papa, and his mama, and his brothers and sisters, and the butlers, and the housemaids, and two or three policemen were waiting at the front door when they arrived. Aha, said one of the police, seizing Santa Claus roughly by the arm. We've landed you all right. Where have you been with this boy? You let him alone, cried little Billy, with more courage than he had ever expected to show in front of a policeman. He's a friend of mine. That's right, officer, said little Billy's father. Let him alone. I haven't entered any complaint against him. But you want to look out for these fellows, Mr. Harrison, returned the officer. First thing you know, they'll be making a trade of this sort of thing. I'm no grafter, retorted Santa Claus indignantly. I found the little chap wandering along the street and... As soon as I was able to locate where he lived, I brought him home. That's all there is to it. Oh, he knew where I lived all along, laughed little Billy. Only he pretended he did it just to see if I knew. You see, sir, said the officer, it won't do him any harm to let him cool his heels. It is far better that he should warm them, officer, said Mr. Harrison. And he can do that here. Come in, my man, he added, turning to Santa Claus with a grateful smile. Just for a minute anyway, Mrs. Harrison will wish to thank you for bringing our boy back to us. We've had a terrible afternoon. That's, that, that's all right, sir, said Santa Claus modestly. It wasn't anything, sir. I didn't really find him. It was, it was him as found me, sir. He took me for the real thing, I guess. Nevertheless, Santa Claus, led by little Billy's persistent father, went into the house. Now that the boy could see him in the full glare of many electric lights, his furs did not seem the most gorgeous thing in the world. When the flapping front of his red jacket flew open, the child was surprised to see how ragged was the thin gray coat it covered. And as for the good old saint's comfortable stomach, strange to say, it was not. I, I wish you all a, a Merry Christmas, faltered Santa Claus, but I, I, I really must be going, sir. Nonsense, cried Mr. Harrison. Not until you got rid of this chill and I, I can't stay, sir said Santa. I'll lose my job if I do. Well, what if you do? I'll give you a better one, said the banker. I, I can't, I, I, I can't, faltered the old man. I, I, I've got a little Billy of my own at home waiting for me, sir. If I hadn't, he added fiercely, 
Do you suppose I'd be doing this? He pointed at the painted boards and shuddered. It's him as has kept me from, from the river, he muttered hoarsely. And then this dispenser of happiness to so many of people all over the world sank into a chair and covered his face with his hands and wept like a child. I guess Santa Claus is tired, Papa, said little Billy, snuggling up closely to the old fellow and taking hold of his hand sympathetically. He's been walking an awful lot today. Yes, my son, said Mr. Harrison gravely. These are very busy times for Santa Claus, and I guess that as he still has a hard night ahead of him, James had better bring the car around and tell Henry to get him a fur coat to keep the wind off him, for it is a very bitter night. Oh, said little Billy, I haven't told you about these boards he wears. He has them to keep the wind off, and they're fine, Papa. Little Billy pointed to the two signs which Santa Claus had leaned up against the wall. He says he uses them on cold nights, the lad went on. They have writing on them, too. Do you know what it says? Yes, Mr. Harrison, glancing at the boards. It says, if you want a good Christmas dinner for a quarter, go to Smithers Cafe. Little Billy roared with laughter. <laughs> Papa's trying to fool me, just as you did when you were pretending not to know where I lived, Santa Claus, he said, looking up into the fellow's face, his own countenance brimming over with mirth. You must have think he can't read, though, the lad added hastily. He's only joking. Oh, no, indeed. I shouldn't have thought that, replied Santa Claus, smiling through his tears. I've been joking, have I? said little Billy's papa. Well then, Mr. Billiam, suppose you inform me what it says on those boards. Merry Christmas to everybody, said little Billy proudly. I couldn't read it myself, but he told me what it said. He has it printed there, so if he misses saying it to anybody, then they'll know he meant it just the same. By Jove! Mr. Santa Claus, cried little Billy's papa, grasping the old man warmly by the hand. I owe you 10 million apologies. I haven't believed in you for so long now, but now, sir, I take it all back. You do exist. You do, and by the great horn spoon, you are the real thing. Little Billy, had the satisfaction of acting as host to Santa Claus at a good, luscious dinner, which Santa Claus must have enjoyed very much because when explaining why he was so hungry, it came out that the poor old chap had been so busy all day that he had not had time to get any lunch. Not even one of those good dinners at Smithers Cafe, to which little Billy's father had jokingly referred. And after dinner, Henry came around with the automobile and bidding everyone a good night, Santa Claus and little Billy's papa went out of the house together. Christmas morning dawned, and little Billy awoke from wonderful dreams of rich gifts and of extraordinary adventures with his newfound friend to find the reality quite as splendid as the dream things. Later, what was his delight when a small boy, not much older than himself, a pale, thin, but playful little fellow, arrived at the house to spend the day with him, bringing him a letter from Santa Claus himself. This is what the letter said. Dear little Billy, you must not tell anybody except your mama and papa, but this little boy who brings you this letter is my little boy and I'm gonna let you have him for a playfellow for Christmas Day. Treat him kindly for his papa's sake, and if you think his papa is worth loving, tell him so. Do not.
forget me, little Billy. I shall see you often in the future, but I doubt you will see me. I'm not going to return to 23rd Street again, but shall continue my work in the land of Yule, in the Palace of Goodwill, whose beautiful windows look upon the homes of all good children. Goodbye, little Billy, and the happiest of happy Christmases to you and all of yours. Affectionately, Santa Claus. When little Billy's mama read this to him that Christmas morning, a stray little tear ran down her cheek and fell upon little Billy's hand. Why, what are you crying for, mama? He asked. With happiness, my dear little son, his mother answered. I was afraid yesterday that I might have lost my little boy forever, but now you have an extra one thrown in for Christmas, haven't you? Said little Billy taking his new playmate by the hand. The visitor smiled back at him with a smile so sweet that anybody might have guessed that he was the son of Santa Claus. As for the latter, little Billy has not seen him again, but down at his father's bank, there's a new messenger named John who has a voice so like Santa Claus's voice that whenever little Billy goes down in the motor to ride home at night with his papa, he runs into the bank and has a long talk with him, just for the pleasure of pretending that it's Santa Claus that he's talking to. Indeed, the voice is so like that once a sudden and strange idea flashed across little Billy's mind. Have you ever been to 23rd Street, John? He asked. 23rd Street, replied the messenger, scratching his head as if very puzzled. Well, what's that? Why, it's a street, said little Billy, vaguely. Well, to tell you the truth, Billy, said John, I've heard tell of 23rd Street, and they say it's as beautiful and a very interesting spot. But you know, I don't get much chance to travel. I've been too busy all my life to go abroad. Abroad, roared little Billy, grinning at John's utterly absurd mistake. Why, 23rd Street ain't abroad. It's uptown near, oh, near 22nd Street. Really, returned John, evidently tremendously surprised. Well, 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 who'd have thought that? Well, if that's the case, sometime when I get a week off, I'll have to go and spend my vacation there. From which little Billy concluded that his suspicion that John might be Santa Claus in disguise was entirely without foundation in fact. The end. Thank you for joining us. Good night and happy holidays. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Well, that was a wonderful story to bring our holiday story time event to a close. I am so glad I could stop by each evening to share this wonderful time together with you. Thank you so much to the Liberty Group for making this holiday story time possible for all of us. Ho, 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 ho. Remember, if there's one thing you can do this year and in these extraordinary times, it is to be kind to each other. We wish for all of you the innocence and love of a child like Billy and the generosity and care for each other we saw from Santa John and from Billy's family. At Christmas time and all year, we need to take care of each other. Happy Holidays to all of you, from all of us at Fourth Wall Theatre Company. Oh, ho, 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 ho.